In 1994, in a southern state of the US, a woman named Diana Deuser woke up from her sleep like any other day. But little did she know that her life was going to change in a few moments. That morning, she went to the kitchen and put two slices of bread into the toaster for her breakfast. Just when she was about to take her first bite, she noticed something familiar. There was a face on the side of the bread and it was the face of Virgin Mary. Although it's strange that Mary decided to turn up on a piece of bread instead of at the Vatican or the Times Square, this story is interesting for two reasons. One, she later sold the bread on eBay for $28,000. Second, there is nothing special about Diana Deuser. Seeing patterns is natural and in Stone Age times was also necessary for our survival. Patterns helped us identify whether the shape in the bushes was a tiger or a deer. Now after millions of years, even though we don't live in the jungle anymore, that habit hasn't left us. We see shapes on the moon. We see dog-shaped clouds and elephant-shaped rocks. They are not a threat. But the problem comes when we apply the same principles to our investment decisions. When we try to find strange patterns in candlestick charts, stock prices, company profits and whatever data we get and base that to predict the future. And this is not a good way of investing. Stock market is a complicated machine to make simple predictions like that. And if you are someone who does that, next time you toast your bread, look closely at the sides. I've always been fascinated by human psychology. Our brain is a wonderful organ. It's like a supercomputer that can do amazing things. But it's not perfect. There are flaws, certain bugs that the evolution left behind us that influence how we think and act. So in this video, we will analyze 8 strange games that our minds play that makes us bad investors. And the last one on the list is the most common mistake every beginner investor make. And most of the facts I explain in this video come from the book The Art of Thinking Clearly written by Rolf Dobelli. It's a great read and you should definitely check it out. Let's conduct an experiment. I'm going to flip this coin. Heads. Okay, let's flip it again. Again heads. Let's give it another try. Head again. Now before I flip it again, I will give you a moment to predict the next result. What do you think it will be? The result is not important. You will choose tails if you think like the most, even though heads is just as likely. This is called the gambler's fallacy and it makes us believe that things can't stay the same for long, that a change has to happen at some point. But this need not be the case at all. A stock that has been going up can keep going up and one that is making losses can keep making losses. There are many other factors at play here that can influence the price of a share. So be careful and don't invest like a gambler. Another bias closely related to this is the contrast effect. Take a look at this image. The two grey square boxes in the center. Which is darker? Is it the left one or the right one? I'll give you a few seconds. Both boxes are of the same color. But our perception is distorted because the differences are enhanced when we compare it to the outer box. Now let's apply this to the stock market. Suppose the value of Tesla fell from $200 to $150 in a day. That's a 25% drop in price and a good time to grab a few shares at a lower price, right? But the important thing to understand is that the price of a share is never high or low. It is just what it is. And the only thing that matters is whether it goes up or down from that particular point. So always focus on the absolute price of a share or even a product rather than the relative price. Let's go back to Tesla. What do you think of the stock and the company? Climate change is real and more nations are moving towards greener energy sources. So the demand for electric vehicles will naturally rise and that's good news for Tesla. And then there is Musk whose personality and charisma make us believe in the company. So most probably it's a buy for most of us because with whatever information we have, we are pretty confident that the stock has to do well in the future. But then Tesla could fail. They had a head start in the electric space, but the cars are still expensive and the competition is picking up. And how the Tesla stock performs in the future will highly depend on a single person, Elon Musk, who can sometimes act a bit impulsively. Doing things that seemed impulsive, on CEO-ish? Uh, well, first of all, I, 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 I am somewhat impulsive. So if we decide to buy the Tesla stock only based on the rising demand for electric cars, then we would be in for a surprise. Sometimes we systematically overestimate our knowledge and use that to make predictions about the future. This is called the overconfidence effect, where people think that they know more than they actually do. I am also guilty of this. When Coinbase came with an IPO in 2021, I invested in it. 
I had done my research and was pretty confident that crypto will definitely go to the moon and Coinbase will play an important part in it. And now it's the worst performing investment in my portfolio. I know it's very difficult to be cautious here. The only thing that we can do is to be critical about our own knowledge. The day after I bought the Coinbase stock, the price went on a decline. There were clear signs of the company going into trouble. If I had been careful, I could have seen the trend and sold it at $300, $200 or even at $100. But I didn't want to sell because I had already invested a good amount of money in it and I didn't want that to go to waste. So I held on to it. And that's called sunk cost fallacy. Warren Buffett once famously said, when you find yourself in a hole, the best thing you can do is to stop digging. The price at which we buy should never influence our decision to sell. This decision should only be based on the future prospects of the company. Unfortunately, Suncos fallacy makes us hold on to our investments even when it's in our best interest to get rid of them. But then there was another reason why I didn't sell the stock earlier. You might have heard the famous Aesop fable about the fox and the grapes. A fox tries to get the grapes to eat but cannot reach them. He goes away in disgust saying he never wanted them in the first place. Sometimes we reinterpret things retrospectively to avoid admitting our mistakes. Even though it was clear to me that the stock was overpriced, I kind of convinced myself that the decline was a temporary fluctuation in the market and Coinbase would soon come back to its correct price. I was playing the fox and this thinking is called cognitive dissonance. Now let's do another experiment. Let's fold this paper in half and do that again and again 50 times. How thick do you think it will get? It will be 60 million miles after 50 folds. That's approximately the distance from Earth to the Sun. Not what you expected, right? But if I had asked you how thick it would get, if I stacked them one on top, then you can guess approximately. Why? The first was an exponential scale and the second was linear. We are very bad when it comes to analyzing exponential or percentage growth. And again, our genetics are to blame. Humans in the Stone Age rarely came across situations of the exponential scale. If one deer was enough food for one week, two meant enough food for two weeks. Life was simple. But now we are living in a totally different world. The global economy is projected to grow by just 1.7%. Inflation in the US is now at 6.5%. What does that even mean? A 5% inflation means the same amount of money that gets you an apple today will get you only half an apple in 14 years. So when making decisions based on per stage growth, think carefully. A 1% difference in return of investment may not look like much now, but could mean another 100,000 in some years. Just like with exponential growth, we are also bad at assessing risk. Each and every decision that we make leads us to several paths with different levels of risk. But most often, we only see that one path with the least amount of risk and ignore others. When things look good, then people forget the alternative paths our decision can take. If we like something, then we believe that the risks are smaller and the benefits greater than they actually are. Our brain will do everything to convince us that our success is guaranteed. In short, the risks are not always directly visible. So think well about the worst case scenario and what you have to lose before jumping into any investments. And now to the most common and most important mistake every beginner investor makes. If you watch the last football world cup final, in the penalty shootout, you might have noticed that the goalkeeper moved to the right or to the left every time. According to a study by Israeli researcher Michael Bar Eli, players normally shoot one third of the time to the left, one third to the right and one third to the center. However, in 90% of the cases, goalkeepers still dive left or right. Why? It just looks better. Sometimes it's more impressive and less embarrassing to do the wrong thing and fail than to do nothing and watch. This normally happens to us when we start with our investment journey. We do too much. We will buy a stock today and sell it tomorrow. We keep checking on the market every hour. Ideally, it's better to dip our toes in slowly, watch and study the market behavior before making huge investments. But somehow, we can't stand in action. Again, our ancestors are to blame. If a shadow in the bush looks like a tiger, it's better to run and hide somewhere instead of taking a wait and see approach. But as Bagheera said, the rules of the jungle are not applicable in the stock market. So if a situation is new or unclear, realize and assess all your options before jumping into action. As I mentioned earlier, we humans are not perfect and it was never the goal of evolution to make us perfect. We evolved with only one goal in mind, 
survival. As long as we could advance beyond our competitors, certain aspects of our thinking remained even though they are irrelevant in modern times. And this makes us puppet to our emotions and we make decisions based on feelings rather than thoughts. And this is not restricted to our investments. The same flaws are in play when we go to shopping, make budget or do anything related to money. This video is only one part of a series where we look at the connection between human psychology and money, where we look at some strange financial decisions that we make that are not at all in our best interest. If you want to do better at our finances, then we should always ask ourselves, what do we think about this instead of how do we feel about this? Adios.